Hello. Uh, Hello. We are, we are live. Um, welcome to Nonfiction Book Club for this month. Um, I am Deboki, and with me is Nicole. I'm trying to remember to do the introductions of who we are uh -huh. first, because uh -huh. that is always like the thing that I feel like I end up forgetting. But uh -huh. uh, Without this is fail. our our monthly yeah. <laughs> but this is our monthly nonfiction book club. Uh, we've been going back and forth now for like more than a year and written all sorts of different books, including this month's book, which is a book about reading books. So that was fun. Um, oh, we have very different. Covers. We have different covers. Um, Ooh. This, this might have been an. I'm not sure if the, it doesn't say that it was an arc, but I like got this when I was like. Part of the reason why this has been on my shelf for so long is I like got this book when I was interning and it was like on the like publicity shelf. And oh, so wow. I was like, I was like, cool, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that. And so I've had it for a while and just like have been putting off reading it. So uh -huh, I guess uh -huh. at some point this is what the cover looked like. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do we do we need to do more introductions of who we are? Are we good? I'm Devoki, no, think, that's Nicole. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we did it. I think that's who yeah. we are. Oh, no. <laughs> that that is all that we are is uh -huh. our names. Uh huh. Um, I have no other relevant identity. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. We both um, make um educational stuff, uh, YouTube stuff. Yeah. That's it. Which I think is probably the one thing that it feels like relevant to yes. to the book. Yes. Um, so yeah. 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 So yeah. I'll... We're here on behalf of big digital. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. To take down Mary. <laughs> digital <Hendel>. learning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and then also here on behalf of booktube i guess like is the other thing yeah it's really um, so real it's complex here, yeah. yeah um so i guess i'll do like a quick overview of the book um the, the the book is subtitled the reading brain in a digital world um marianne does uh marianne i'm not personally friends with her my best friend marianne sorry um uh, marianne wolf does research on um on reading and cognition and learning um and she had written a book previously about this about like the history of literacy um and kind of like left it off like right before getting into like the era of the big digital world that we're in now. Um, and so she kind of wanted to go back and explore that in this book. Um, and it's it's sort of a book, and I mean, it's definitely informed by her research, but I don't think of this as a very research academic-y kind of book. It's a little bit more driven by like her feeling of what's gonna happen. And I think it's pretty upfront about that, which is uh, something that kind of goes both ways, I'm, I think, <laughs> um, throughout the book. Um, but it's basically her kind of exploring what she thinks is happening and will happen in the face of like the digital world that's out there and how that's going to affect our reading habits and it's like really rooted in her understanding of the brain where it's like very much built on in the beginning she starts out with this introduction to like how the brain works basically like how our brain learns to read and kind of like what a remarkable process that is to begin with which is pretty cool um but then she she kind of like uses that as her foundation for talking about what she thinks the role of reading is not just like with our brain but then with developing empathy and then like what she think is what she thinks is being like I guess endangered or threatened by by the the digital world and then kind of goes into some of the things that she thinks are strategies for particularly teaching kids when they're young um how to like balance like the things that are great about reading and the things that are actually great about digital because like while she does see digital as this sort of like looming threat to reading uh she also like is like very I think cognizant that it's not going anywhere and it has like value too um so she's kind of going through that whole thought process and doing it also through a very specific structure of writing this as a letter to the reader each of the chapters are framed as letters which I think makes it more of a discoursey kind of book um so that is the very broad overview of, of what this book is. Um, I think we could maybe even almost kind of approach it through that letter mm -hmm. format. Cause I think one of the things is like, she is very open to the fact that like readers are not going to necessarily always agree with her. Like she actually yeah. welcomes it. She's like straight up, like you might disagree with me. And so I feel like the letter format kind of lends itself well to that. Yeah. Yeah. Because the whole thing is meant to be structured as sort of a dialogue. And I think 
it's interesting. To, there is a, a piece of that that I think is incredibly clever because it is inviting the reader to engage in precisely the way that I like. I guess not. There, there's a lot of things that she fears are being lost, but what like yeah. this this sort of sense of sitting with a book and allowing it to give you the space to form your own thoughts is on the long list of things that she feels is being threatened by digital reading. And it's, it is really interesting that the structure of the book is so active in encouraging that sort of like, here are all of my thoughts. And if you do not agree, like you maybe won't agree with them. Like this is, yeah. you know, I, like I am inviting you into, into conversation. And, um, and that is, uh, if, if that feels one, extremely intentional and two, extremely intentional, like indirect service of the point of the book uh totally. which I think is really cool and interesting yeah and I think like it's also like the letter format is like it's it's like that intent of like having a conversation and also like a return to like this old form like the idea of like oh like you know we're writing letters <laughs> like like this is like not an email this is not a text and so there's part of it where you're kind of like oh, okay I see what this book is doing like yeah that's cute but it's also like I I kind of liked it like I think yeah. uh, it gives it that like more especially because again this is not a book that is like necessarily getting into super technical or like there are moments where she cites research but like it's not going so in depth so like giving it that letter format like makes that more okay like I've read yes. other books that are similarly a little bit more vague with the research but you get a little bit more or at least I get more frustrated because I'm like but, but what what is like what is the thing yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You I feel like he, you're you're making a lot of point you're you know making a lot of arguments here but I feel like you're not you know backing them up enough and yeah like there there are ways in which the, the letter format is is very much like th these are my opinions as opposed to yeah. yes it is less frustrating because you're less inclined to be like where the where's the evidence where's the evidence ma'am yeah yeah <laughs> yeah the with that said, I think the thing that maybe you and I, like, I think we, we, when we were doing our like initial thoughts, like quick rundown yesterday, one of the things that is frustrating with the book is like the way that there are some words that are kind of repeatedly used, particularly to me, digital and deep reading are both used throughout this book without like, to me, a very clear definition of like what she's even referring to. And that mm -hmm. was like a lot tougher to deal with. I think I so to, I guess to me it's less even my issue is is less a lack of definition and more I guess the the lack of definition felt very much like uh, she doesn't feel the need for for definition because to her it is all of the things that are not tactile it is if yeah. it is screen it is digital yeah. and and like that is frustrating to me because. It, it like waters down a lot of the points that she is making because there are places where I'm just like, all of these things are not the same. Like you are comparing, yeah. there are just, there are so many different kinds of activities that are taking place in this, this, <laughs> the space that you have lumped yeah. and termed all of it digital, all of it is the yeah. same, all of it is one. Um, and that is just, is incredibly frustrating because I do think she's making a lot of like really interesting points that are worth thinking about and worth considering. It's just yeah. that the way in which she is using the word digital, every time like, it got <laughs> to a point where every time she said it, I could feel myself like Mm, kind of checking out because I was frustrated with yeah. with what felt like a really really reductive understanding of of what constitutes digital yeah yeah and I think it's like some of the things that she's saying are things that like we've all kind of like if you've been on the internet like you have seen the arguments made and so it gets to the point where it's like the specificity would have like been able to add more, but I don't know that this is a book that's trying to be specific in that way either. Um, but it is like, there are also some moments where it's just kind of like straight up funny. Like there's, uh, there's one quote like that stood out to me like late in the book. Um, it's like, well, not late, it's middle of the book. Um, it's like page 87 in my copy. Um, what would happen if a culture shared repertoire of illusions begins to shrink and gradually disappear? And I was reading that and I was thinking of like TikTok. I was like, I, I think we're fine. I think we've got yeah. shared, plenty of shared references. <laughs> like, and like, if anything, this is like the opposite problem that she alludes to at other points where it's like, we've got an overwhelming amount of shared references to like and deal with now. 
not only that, like uh, we have overwhelming um, amount of shared references and like what the like what constitutes the community where the sharing is taking place is just shifting. And, and like this is the kind of thing where it feels like you, you're you sort of it feels a little bit like she's missing a point almost um, because so to take that example, to take TikTok mm-hmm. as 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 an example of a space. I, like there are many people in my life for whom these are not shared references. TikTok is in fact mm-hmm. a great example because even people who are also extremely on TikTok are yeah. having very different experiences yeah. as like what they're seeing and what they're being served. Um, yeah. But like also, I don't know, it, it it's because like those, the, 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 the boundaries of like who is in that community are just no longer like geographic boundaries, you mm-hmm. know? And so like, I don't know. I, I yeah, I, I just think, I think that it is a place where there is just th- there no nuance. I don't know. Like I, yeah. there are there yeah. are there are many places in this book that like where she's making points that rely on like a tremendous amount of nuance, and like her whole thing is uh, like people having more nuance is so fundamental yeah. to the thing that she wants, and so for her then to concurrently say like digital is d- depriving people of their ability to have nuance. Yeah. And just like how how do you not hear it? How do you not how do you not see yeah. it? how do you not see it? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like like and I I've at this point I feel like any call for nuance in on the internet feels as unnuanced as the things that are being talked about. And yes. I feel the same way with how she sometimes talks about empathy, especially when she like kind of brings up specific examples of what she thinks are unempathetic, where you're like sometimes like the calls for empathy feel like a very specific view of what empathy should even be or what it means. And I don't, I actually don't think I entirely disagree. Like I actually Uh like, there are ways in which I'm like, yeah, I think like, at least for me personally, like engaging with digital media, I've had to like put restrictions on because I have seen it affect my, like, I don't know, empathy for things, but I think that's a personal thing that I've like had to navigate. I don't, I still feel weird about being like digital world is ruining empathy because there's also a lot of ways that it it has expanded my empathy. And it's just been about figuring out what I think in the long run is actually the goal of this book is like, actually, what is the balance? Like what is the balance between using everything that is amazing about the internet and also stepping back and having like another mode of media that lets you sit and think a little bit, because I do for me again, at least my experience of the internet is similar to what she's saying in terms of like, I find it very hard to sit and think on the internet. Like if I am scrolling through Twitter or TikTok, like, yeah, I, I don't like actually often find myself like, thinking it's more like when I step back and I'm like you know if something's made me angry or something's been really cool it's like when I step back and like actually try to talk to someone about it in real life and like am processing it out loud that's like when I feel like I'm actually thinking and I can't do that online but that's fine like I just have to like structure my my energy that way yeah I think I think that so again I also agree with a lot of what she is trying to say here like I think I agree with more than what I disagree with I'm just yeah. sort of harping on these specific points that were that were frustrating to me because I agree more than I disagree yeah. with the points that she's making you know but everything that you just said really like resonated because I think that I think that like the heart of my frustration is that it feels like she is not um she she, it is like implicit in her whole take here is that people are not is that there that no that people cannot do that for themselves that there Mm -hmm. is no measure of like taking stock um uh, there's there's a i don't know like there is a there's a call to action here to to do something that i think is important and valuable but i also think it it feels a little bit like the book is not giving people enough credit for already like heeding that call to action in some ways yeah um I don't know. yeah yeah and I think maybe part of it is like at the point that like this book was written a few years ago and I mm. I think I feel like over the past few years I like and it's been going on for a while like you've seen people talk about leaving Facebook Twitter all these places like for years now I think in the past year in particular obviously with like the internet being like social media being such a big part of people's lives like I've seen the conversations happening more and I think part of where she's writing this from is from the point of like wondering if these conversations are going to happen like are they happening are they going to happen and what is it going to look like it's coming from that place of like we don't know yet what the internet Mm -hmm. is like Mm -hmm. going to do and like even a few years later we have a little bit more information than like 
we did at this point though then again like this is like this is like not that old of a book it's like i don't remember exactly when it was published but still like late 2010s yeah 2018 so it's not like super long ago or anything yeah but i think it is coming from the place of uncertainty about what's going to happen and that's where it's like again why i think it's like leaning into that more like casual mode of um argument i guess i mean i don't know like the uncertainty is the uncertainty always i don't know the uncertainty yeah, is, is evergreen and like i yeah. i don't know I, I i don't think i don't think I don't think that it being written in 2018 is a factor, I <laughs> yeah. guess, is, is yeah, all yeah, yeah. I'll say about that. Uh, yeah. That doesn't feel like a, a reasonable component of this. But um, I mean, because I, I, I like I, I also think that these con <sighs> this is OK, because it's sort of tying back to like a separate from this book, like frustration that yeah. I have, which is the. Um, um, why isn't anybody talking about this phenomenon? And it's like yeah. the second that somebody like you walk into a conversation and like because the conversation is new to you, you're like, oh, my God, why haven't I heard about this before? Um, yeah. Except it's not why haven't I? It's, it's like jumping directly to why isn't anybody talking about this? People fucking are. People are talking about it. Like whatever yeah. the thing is that you're saying, why isn't anybody talking about this? There are people that have been talking about this for years and years and years. Um, yeah. And like, uh, you know, like you've just entered the conversation and there are a thousand other ways that you can express that feeling of like, this conversation is new to me and I am a new entrant into this conversation. Um, other other than why isn't anybody talking, which I guess to be clear, yeah. I don't think the book is doing, I, yeah, I don't yeah. think the book Yeah, she cites doing. enough other conversations where it's clear yeah. that she's yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. aware that people aren't talking about it. Yes, yeah, that's- No, that I is, know what you mean, yeah. But yeah, I guess, yes, in, in terms of the like, where where the conversation is at, I just, I don't know. Like, yeah. To me, it does feel like the questions about how we are engaging with this space. I think, like, I, I don't, I think that for all of the reasons that she is repeatedly citing that like we are at this moment, uh, we are at this moment where we're, we're watching this massive um, technological sort of shift where it like, technological societal shift is happening and we also have all of these sort of research and like observational tools at our disposal yeah. that allow us to see it happening in a way that is kind of unique in history um and for all of those reasons i think that people have been doing that like i think that people have yeah. uh, like in in varied ways to varied degrees i think that that like has been happening and so i just yeah. i don't know i am i yeah, I, I, now I don't really know where I'm going with this, just except to say that, like, I, I think that there is probably a lot more. I think people are being there are more people being like thoughtful about the way that they are engaging with this space than this conversation is is like adequately giving credit to. Yeah. Separately, I do think, though, that her point about like it behooves us to be really, really thoughtful about what this means for children. Like normally the, you know, it's like a, a joke almost the think of the children yeah. is like whatever. Yeah. But in this case, I think that she is like successfully making that case about the ways yeah. in which like it, it is one thing for us to sit here and like grapple with existential questions about what this means for who we have been and who will, who we will become, which yeah. again, like, this isn't the first time I was asking myself the, these questions. Yeah. Um, but like, it is one thing for us to do that as adults. It is another thing for us to, uh, you know, not to introduce children into this yeah. like moment of change without being, um, you know, without being sort of thoughtful about that. And, and again, like not that people have been, people have been doing that, but I think that to me is where that element of this argument is where the book is actually at its strongest because the point is yeah. more like, this should be a conversation like this. We should yeah. be talk. We should be discussing what this means uh, for future generations. Like what the yeah. choices that we are making now. Like what the consequences of those of those choices will be. Um, those parts of the book I yeah. found, and I don't know. I guess maybe if I had kids, I might feel differently. But the think of the children parts of the book, yeah. I actually think were the strongest. Were, yeah. Where the book was at its strongest. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think yeah. those were also actually kind of the moments that were the most grounded in her own research, and that's yeah. part of what made it strong. Because I, like, I mean, as someone who is, like, thinking about having kids and all this stuff, like, I have, like, had the question of, like, how am I going to raise my kids? And I've kind of increasingly been like, well, does it matter? Like, I know it matters. <laughs> but, like, I've been like, does it matter? Like, there's right, so much right. information out there that at a certain point, you're like, you know what? 
Like human beings have been doing this for millennia. Like, this this will be fine. People less right. competent than me have yeah. figured it out. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, but but I think what was like really great about the way that she wrote it is that it was like very grounded on like really simple, like clear elements of like, hey, this is like not just about the reading. This is not just about the words. This is about like the interaction. This is about like the touch. This is about a lot of different parts of your brain mm -hmm. developing mm -hmm. together when you're young and like. Yeah. That was, I, I really liked, I'm not a huge brain person, like neuroscience is not my forte, um, but especially in the beginning, like she has this point where she's talking about like what, how like one of the coolest parts of our brain is what's like, what they call like plasticity within limits, where it's just like how like, like moldable or unchangeable our brain is, like how mm. much it's like capable of change and I'd actually like I follow like this neuroscientist on Instagram and someone like asked her like on an Instagram like you know like what's your favorite thing about the brain and that was like also what she had said and so I was like yeah I like literally just read about this these are my things coming together <laughs> um but it is like a really I think like important part of the book I think it like really informs a lot of like how like the way she describes um the circuitry in the brain and also the way that this develops makes a lot of, of the other parts of how she's talking about how she thinks of reading and thinks of reading as part of development, like a lot more, I don't know, like uh, a lot more compelling because it's not just this feeling like this vague sense of like, oh, it's important to teach kids <laughs> to read. Mm -hmm, right, like, right. Uh, like it, it actually doesn't feel quite as like, you know, flat say like won't someone think of the children it's like actually like grounded in something real uh-huh yes or yes at least what i'm yeah. hoping is real like i'm yeah. trusting her as a scientist sure 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 yes yes uh, yeah i completely agree um um yeah I think uh, I, I kind of wanted to talk quickly just about how she describes the reading brain. She has this whole like circus analogy uh, that I felt weirdly about. I don't have strong feelings about it, but it just like the way it was deployed was like very funny to me and just like made me think about the role of metaphors and similes in science writing overall. Um, which is the it, thing that I like. it really lost me. It this the yeah. circus thing. There was just like a lot going on, and I was like, I this is no longer like I don't, I don't really. I, and this is like a, this is something that is hard for me to really pin on her or not because again, yeah. this is this is more in the like science writing sort of piece of it. And I, you know, some of this is 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 maybe me and my own comprehension skills. But it got to a point where I was just like that there's too much going on in this metaphor yeah. where I can't tell what is actual, like what is important for me to understand here about the brain yeah. because I'm, I, I'm like distracted by trying to think about this fucking circus that you're describing, but the yeah. circus isn't being described in a way that is truly co consistent or cohesive. And so yeah. sometimes she would talk about the, like things in the circus being situated in one way, but then she would describe it being situated slightly different a little bit later, like as was needed to serve, the metaphor to serve the bit about the brain which is what yeah. we're actually supposed to be talking about but yeah. i was so hung up i was i was just so hung up on the service thing that i it lost a little bit i don't really under i did not really understand that yeah. whole section of the book yeah if i'm being I, perfectly honest no no i i like agree and like i I feel like for me, it was hard on the other side where I feel like if she had just explained it scientifically, like I would have actually had an easier time following it because I like, like, I, like, I, yeah, I, I was just like, this is, this metaphor is losing me because I'm trying to like keep track of what all of these pieces are. I'm trying to keep track of like what a cyclist means, what like a clown is maybe, like what the rings are. And I felt like if she had just said, your brain is like a circus. Like, I would have been like, I get it. Like, I think cool. I probably would have. Like, I got that's you. What, that and was actually what I, yeah. I felt yeah. like that was like what my takeaway was. Like, the brain is a circus. And I was uh -huh. like, cool, I, I think I got it. Like, that's, uh -huh. that's like all I actually need to know. Yes. It brings like a circus all I need to know. And then like you can take the time to explain the things, like explain them actually, as you were saying, like in scientific yeah. terms. And, you know, how how much I would have been able to track that, I'm not sure. But I think that I would – it would have been less frustrating to me than than losing yeah. the circus metaphor was. Losing the circus metaphor was like actively a frustrating reading experience. And I was just like, 
I partially because of the ways in which I felt low key shamed by this book. This was the first book that I was like, I am not going to also listen to the audiobook. Um, mm-hmm. And it was it was after the circus thing that I was like, okay, I actually can't do this. I, yeah. I just and then I got I caved and I went back to reading this the way that I have read all of the other books, which was yes. with my eyeballs and my ears at the same time. Um, the circus metaphor was a huge part of it because I was like, I do not know what you were talking about. <laughs> I yeah. found, I'm very confused and I'm having a hard time. Uh, and I, this yeah. will only make sense to me if I can get my little audiobook narrator, please. Yeah. I, I feel like it's like one of those, I, I that just, that, that's such an, just, and I don't mean this to like pick on her because I think this is like actually legitimately like a really hard part of science reading or writing is like figuring out how, and it's also why that section is really interesting to me, even though I right. don't like it. As, but as a, sci- like, as a science yeah. writer, you're like, this is what I yeah, think yeah. about all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like anytime I like write a simile, I'm like, does this make sense? Do I need to write this? And like, sometimes you also like get really stuck in like, I got to explain this. Like I really got to, uh-huh. I really got to dig deep and make sure it's clear. And then like, five paragraphs later and you're like oh like I don't I, I think I made it worse <laughs> like yeah. I think if I had just written this <laughs> as, as a sentence yeah it would have made uh-huh. sense uh-huh uh-huh it's hard but I think it's also it feels like such an easy like easy crutch like if I don't explain the thing in the actual technical terms then like somehow it will be more clear it would be more accessible to people because I'm not using all these scary technical words. I'm talking about a circus. And so now it will be fine. Um, at Colby in the chat is saying that <laughs> also got lost by the circus section. And there, I'm really yes. comforted. I'm really yeah. comforted to know that it wasn't just me. Yeah. Um, thank it you, was... everybody. This is what really yes. matters. To me. Um, I will also say that, you know, just just as an aside here, now that my job um, does involve reading some of your science writing, <laughs> you do a good job of not oh, losing you. me with your metaphors and similes. Uh, so That's I, good. That is not I'm going to record this. Anytime yeah. I see a Google comment now, I'm going to be like, well, Nicole, I'm going to um, hold you to this one specific conversation. This one yeah. time you said that I uh, do a good job at this. So I'm really not sure yeah. why you're leaving me a note. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I thought I was I, perfect. I, <laughs> open this Google Doc and I see that you've left me a bunch of notes and yeah. I thought we said yeah. I don't need those. I don't really yeah. I don't really need those. I'm good. <laughs> I'm all that's, set. How, that's how editing works. <laughs> that's I think so. That sounds that sounds true. That sounds yeah. uh, that sounds correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> uh, going back to the reading, another um thing that like I was like this is hysterical is when she was talking about Niccolo Machiavelli dressing up to talk to authors like in the past and like having conversations with authors and this was hysterical to be just like on like the the explanation of it to begin with like the idea of like Machiavelli being mm-hmm. like I am going to put on clothes to pretend that I am talking to authors but I also found the section I, I found that like interesting to um because of like how it made me think of fandom and fan works like in the Mm. modern day because I feel Mm. like this is like an original fan work like I think this is like renaissance right he was renaissance right like whatever old European like you know those guys Yeah. yeah it's been a while since I've taken modern European history and it turns out modern covered a long period of time that's amazing. I'm obsessed with, I had not considered it that way, but now I want to go reread that section because I'm yeah delighted. I'm delighted by this idea. Yeah. And I think, so the reason why I like, it made me think of that is like a lot of what this book made me think about in general was like the fact that we talk about books on the internet. Like we have this whole like booktube community on YouTube. We do this. And then also like, have like in various other means, like consume things and at various points like she talks about like you know critical analysis of books and stuff but I think one of the things that was not missing but it's just like something that I wanted to dive into more with the book was like what what does like the role what is the role of like fandom in like empathy and critical reading and all of that because I think it is sort of both sides like I see it applying to both sides of what she's talking about in terms of deep reading like there are parts of it where I feel like actually like a lot of people who participate in fandom like are engaging in a lot of deep reading and it's like a whole community that is like founded on like being really creative around deep 
reading. Mm -hmm. um, even though I don't always agree with those deep readings, but that is sort of like what the core of these communities are. But at the same time, there are also ways that fandom, depending on like what platform it's on or like what parts of the community you're in, kind of does become like what I think is that more stereotypical, like threatening image, I guess, of like what digital media can be, where it's like a little mm. bit more um, hostile, a little bit more, um, I don't know difficult to navigate and that's like uh, super variable like i think that's like again like that like it's like th that fandom can operate in both dimensions it's like kind of what is interesting to me yes yeah yeah sorry i just this is this is this is new this is a new a new thought yeah. for me to sit with uh, yeah. <laughs> um this is this is gonna be one of those uh where you can expect to hear from me next week after yeah. when uh, <laughs> when this yeah. thought sits in my brain and doesn't leave me, and I'm like, oh, here's all the things I should have said on the yeah. stream. <laughs> yeah. No, if I'd been better about realizing this last night, I would have been like, fandom. We're gonna talk about fandom. Oh man, I know, I know. I feel that's the thing. It's like I feel, um, I feel, I feel a tremendous amount of pressure whenever conversations veer in that direction. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> Now I have to be ready to have a smart thought. Um, and then the second I tell myself I have to be ready to have a smart thought, my brain's like, nope, none. You have no, none. They're all gone. I threw away all your thoughts. Yep. <laughs> so. Yeah. Because that, like, especially when she talks, like, she talks, like, she uses this example of, like, having Wade's um, six word short story, the baby shoes, for sale, baby shoes never worn, um, and how, like, you know, you can read that at a lot of different points in your life and like you will understand that it's sad but like if you're like a six-year-old your understanding of what's sad about it is gonna be like really different because you're like not coming in with a lot of background knowledge mm -hmm. and I guess yeah I I had never thought to think about that in the context of like fandom and like how that shapes I guess like these community experiences um yeah I don't know. I don't, this is now like getting to rambly just because I don't know where I'm going with it. Um, <laughs> but I just like find it really interesting because I feel like, like, you know, this is like a thing that comes up on booktube is like the discussions of like whether the community is like more of like a, I don't know, a book hype community or a book discussion sure. community. And I think uh -huh. it's both like, right. like, like any community, like I think it happens. Right. Um, yeah, I just find it, I don't know, I'm like in a weird place with internet communities in general. So this, yeah. this book hit on a lot of that without actually hitting on that. In a right, way where I'm like, talking now, about something like, else, but still bringing up a lot of, yes, a lot of the same like questions and issues. Um, the yeah. example of that, the, the, the Hemingway story is interesting because that's another thing that like also whatever, pinged on, on something yeah. like adjacent for me, which is um, again, like the ways in which <sighs> I, I didn't, I didn't expect to go into this conversation coming for her so hard for both the Luddite <laughs> elements of this book. Yeah. But now that we're having this conversation, I realized that like it did bother me more than I realized at the time that I was reading it. Because again, yeah. the so like the the Hemingway story, I think, is another example of something where like I, you know. I definitely encountered that a very, for the first time, like a very long time ago. But I feel like my experience with it has taken on this whole other life on Twitter, which to the degree mm. that she acknowledges the existence of Twitter, Twitter is 100% evil. Like to, Twitter is like, is, is, is like at the, the center of like all the bad things about digital. Um, this yeah. idea of like short form, quick reading. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think again, sort of building on some of the things that you're saying about like fandom and, and like the ways and, um, adaptation, um, and mm. all of the different kinds of things that, ways that you can engage with a text sort of like very actively and very creatively um at, that like I, I have like that that short story has been sort of like memed and contorted 400 yeah. ways to Sunday on Twitter yeah. like and it like it's a little bit like the the plum poem too which is another one of those things where there's like you see tweets that actually have like 14 different layers of context to like yeah. in order to really understand the tweet it's like yeah. whatever it'll be something I, like i i am i'm at a loss for a great example right now yeah. but it's like i don't know like i have i have taken the sweater that you were probably planning to wear but it's like a taylor <laughs> yeah. swift you know it'll be like yeah. it's like an yeah, all too well yeah. thing but it is structured like yeah. the plum joke uh plum, yeah. plum, plum, plum poem or whatever and like yeah. i just think 
I don't know. Like, I think that there's tremendous value to that kind of thing. Um, and, and it's the kind of conversation, it's like, it is the kind of reading that is only possible through digital. It is only possible through brevity and through this, 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 the way in which everybody is sort of talking at once and we're all sort of participating at once. Like, that's the kind of, that is the only way that something like this is possible. And I, like, I think that that is tremendously valuable. Yeah. Uh, and, and in order to arrive at that, like, like there is deep thought. Like that is not like that, yeah. whatever. Like my my example is like half baked and I would have to sit with it a little bit longer and not be coming up with it on the fly in order to like actually craft like what is what is the um plum poem all too well like sweater joke that I'm trying yeah. to make here. Like whatever. Uh, but like in order to do that, you do actually have to sit with it and you have to think about it and you would have to like think about all of these different layers and like what are the beats? Uh, what are the beats yeah. of the poem? What are the... Yep what are the like most accessible references that I want to make about the freaking scarf, like whatever, uh, yeah. in order to like, to do the thing. Um, and like that, that requires I mean, like, deep thought it, about things that you have read. Like that is like yeah. in order to get to that. Yeah. And so there's just, no one with like deeper reading skills than like Taylor Swift likes hardcore. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I was going to say Taylor Swift fans. I consider myself a Taylor Swift fan. I do not consider myself a hardcore Swiftie because I, that is where my deep reading goes to zero. Yeah, I, that's, I, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm Taylor. not, I'm not here to think critically. In fact. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I really love this comment from Colby about how like the book, like, I, I think this is yes. like a great comment. This is what like, I was. She yes. treats reading as such a solitary thing. Um, when like it's actually like in a lot of ways, like the only social version of reading that exists in this book is professors teaching college students, and like that reading, parents reading to children also. Yeah, but, yeah. but still there is a like hi it's hierarchical is the only yeah. the only kind of social reading that can happen is hierarchical social reading. Yeah, this where's and like this this right here this is the yeah. thing right. Call me like, you fix this. Fix the our problems you have explained like well so no but not only that but it is it is actually an example of the thing it is the thing yeah. in action right so like this is yeah. a thought that i was having while i was reading the book this is like a frustration or well it, like layers deep here you were describing an experience that you had with the book mm -hmm. and i was like yes this makes me think of another sort of piece of it and i'm struggling to articulate like what it is that's making me uncomfortable colby comes in and is like it's it's that there's like a lack of social yeah. like which that is so much of what I value about re like that's why we do yeah. this. That's why yeah. we're doing this thing. It's because yeah. I think that like the like social components of reading um are so like that is what I find deeply va like incredibly valuable about like deep reading. Like that that to yeah. me is much of the point. Um yeah. and I just I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I think like it like so I I feel like the technology stuff, I ended up like feeling like really I don't think I felt as strongly negative about it. Maybe like, I'm just like at a point where I'm like, I, I, I don't know. Like I, I didn't I, feel that way when I was yeah. reading it. It's only now yeah. that we're talking about it that all of a sudden I'm like, and another thing. Yeah. But uh, the thing so. I got really cranky about during the book was reading. I always get prep cranky with descriptions of professors describing students as lazy, but like not based on evidence. Like, I like accept that like you're gonna have students that are gonna frustrate you or whatever. Like mm -hmm. that's a reality of being like a teacher or whatever. But like the the kind of anecdotal use of like professors thinking their students are being lazy is always kind of to me like a I mean like like are you gonna show me that this is different than before? Like is this different from students five years ago or is it different from your image of yourself as a student and what you thought you were like as a student? Because maybe maybe it is a real thing but like the way that this is being described makes it seem more like you thought that this is how students always were and now they're actually something else and mm -hmm. it's like maybe you actually also you just suck as a professor like maybe that's what it is. Like when it's like yeah, they have yeah. the professor who like the is seminar. About, like, the, 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 yeah. Yes. I was like, Oh, boo. like I super, I'm not, I'm really not that devastated that yeah. you're, um, but your seminar, like whatever. Yeah. Your sought after yeah. seminar is no longer sought after. I, I don't know. Yeah. I just, mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, that was like where it was for me. I was like, okay. I swear I, I, I did have to... more positive feelings about this book than <laughs> I, I am currently making it sound like I had. I, <laughs> I think it's hard to talk about this book though. Cause I think like, I think this, I think the thing that like makes 
like, I'm glad that we read this book because I feel like I learned a lot from it. And I think the things that I didn't like about it were things that it, for me were caveated in a way where like, I was like, I knew I'm going to disagree with this kind of going mm-hmm. into it. So it was like, yeah, it's there. And I think the thing that's hard is like, you can only talk about like that good stuff for so long. And it's like, well, also these things are like, they're frustrating and they're frustrating against the backdrop of these conversations that already happen because you see these so much. And like, yes. it's hard to hear people talk about digital media as like this, like rapid churning kind of thing when like, I don't know, in my case, like we work on a channel that's like geared towards very long contemplative meditative discussions about microbiology right like right, right. it's hard for me to feel like a little bit like hey this stuff exists out there like there is like like it's like when people complain about all science news stuff being just like clickbaity and I like I understand it because I get it. Like I've been on the other side where I wasn't engaging as much with the media. And so what I saw was the stuff that was inherently designed to grab my attention in that one particular way. And so Mm -hmm. then I would get mad and now I'm like, Oh yeah, but the point was to get you mad. Like that is what that was designed to do. And actually like if I had done more work to like look for the things that I was interested in, I would have found it. Like it, it all, it does all exist there. And it's, I mean, it also goes back to everything that we were talking about at the beginning, um, just in terms of like the the letter format of the book, where all of the ways in which I do sort of find myself disagreeing with the book, it still feels, um, it actually, it is weird to say it, but like it, it feels more feature than bug that, that mm-hmm. I have all of these, all of these like complicated thoughts about like, no, I think yeah. you're wrong because of X, Y, and Z, because it feels like, it does feel like the in spite of how little uh, um, credit the book gives to, you know, social forms of reading, um, it does feel like the end point is have a conversation. It's just more like internal, like have a conversation with me in your own head or whatever um, is, is like very much the thing that she is trying to in, to, to, to do, to prompt. Uh, And so, and so even in all of the places where, like I don't agree with her conclusions or her her way of arriving at the conclusions. Um, yeah. Actually, because it, more often than not, it's her way of arriving at the conclusions and the conclusions <laughs> themselves that I, I, I yeah. don't like mo- most of my issues are about that. Like conclusions, generally speaking, like her whole breakdown of her ideal reading life of a child or whatever. Cool. I'm, I, I'm yeah. down. I get it. Uh, but like it, a lot of it was like ways of getting there, but it, yeah, yes. Yeah. It felt the issues were a problem of the argument being incomplete rather than just incorrect, um, yeah. which, yes, but also because the book was structured as this dialogue, there's this level of like, I, I can't even fault it to I can't fault it too much for the ways in which the arguments were incomplete because the point is is like conversation. Um, yeah, I don't know, is to get you to sort of think about it and engage in that way. So it, on some level, there, there are pieces of it that felt more feature than bug uh, sometimes yeah. bug, but um, yeah, but also, yeah, I, I think like where I ended up liking this book, like, so where, okay. So where I didn't like this book was its framing of everything. <laughs> like just like the background framing, I like had very big problems with uh-huh. what I liked about the book though, was what it got me to think about in terms of just like my own personal reading habits, like how it like made me reflect on some of those things. Like even like really like basic stuff, like how she talks about like the tactile experience of reading a physical book or handwriting things out where like part of me is kind of like, look at the end of the day, if I'm going to read it on ebook, I'm going to read it on ebook. And I don't think she even like is suggesting that people have to only read physical books because she's right. actually at times like kind of, I think she realizes like it's starting to get a little bit prescriptive and she's like, but look, whatever works, like, especially because it seems like she works with parents who are teaching kids. And like, I yeah. think if you're working with parents, you got to get to a point where you're like, look, whatever works for your kid is like the best thing for your kid. And so I think right. she like has moments where she steps back. Um, but I, what I liked more was this book as like a source of reflection for like my own reading habits and like what I like Mm -hmm. about my own reading experiences. Like over the past few months, because of some work stuff, like I like was doing like this podcast series. So I had to read a lot of books, like in a very short amount of time. So I had like basically over the course of two to three weeks was like, okay, cool. I'm going to wake up early and I need to set an hour of like reading time every morning or this project is not going to get done. And I actually like 
really, really liked that because it was like first thing in the morning I was reading. It like really put me in a great place just like thinking about how these people were writing these books and like how I wanted to think about what they were writing these books. And it was just like, it was just like a really good experience except for the stress of like, I need to finish all these books. Um, But aside from that, it was like a thing that was good for me. And it's just like made me think, I guess, about like, how I read and then again also as someone who reads technically also for a public audience like has made me like kind of like intersected with like someone like not that she is ever talking about this no 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 no, she's talking about the digital but like it it made me think about like yeah I don't know it's just stuff that I've been like that's been in the back of my mind about like how reading for a public audience like sometimes like will interrupt my thoughts while I'm reading because I'll like be thinking Mm -hmm. about like how am I going to talk about this Mm -hmm. or like how am I going to do this and that's Mm -hmm. been Mm -hmm. weird yeah yes that is yeah that is um very interesting um I don't know what this is like a complete tangent, but just getting this thing about like reading for an audience kind of makes me think a little bit about how uh, once upon a time, (laughs) my best friend and I were regularly doing a podcast. Um, We don't really (laughs) do that anymore, but once upon a time that happened. Uh, And I I was literally just thinking about this yesterday because I was talking about the the Blackpink documentary and I was trying to remember like a thought that I had about it. And because we primarily use discord there is this archive this it goes back like three years i think is when we switched to it of like our entire it's just all of our conversations and so like i just pulled it up and i like typed in black pink and i could find the two times because she watched it first yeah. there's the brief conversation we had when she watched it and then i jumped down to the brief conversation we had when i watched it and i was like oh yes <laughs> these are my thoughts about the black pink documentary yeah uh and like i just i don't know it's just funny because it reminds me of this thing about reading for an audience or watching a movie for an audience or whatever, like consuming media for an audience about the ways in which uh, this has become so ingrained that that is like a big chunk of what this, like our, that discord chat is, is just like one of us watching a thing or reading a book and being like, I'm watching this thing and they just said this. And I have this thought about how they just said this, the movie's still playing, but I just have to tell you that I had this thought about how they said this. And I wonder how much of that is, is just, Oh, I'm leaning over to my best friend to like tell her this thought that I had Mm. versus I am leaning over to take notes for the podcast later, which like, even though we don't always do it, so like we never did like the Blackpink documentary, but like, like, (laughs) but like the way in which that, It, you know, like having this space and like we're we're constantly like passing notes about things and like mo like it is a lot of it is sort of like okay well when we when we are recording the podcast I know I'm gonna type in whatever some MCU movie that's a yeah. lot of what they are I'll type yeah. in uh, you know Doctor Strange and then I can see so all of the the conversations we've had about Doctor Strange and like yeah. that it, they're like my quick notes for when I watch this movie publicly for that time when I do the thing publicly. Um, And I just, I don't know. I'm having, I think what's happening right now is that you talking about this is giving me an existential crisis, but whether or not I'm capable (laughs) of consuming media, not publicly anymore. Yeah. And in that respect, you got me, Marianne. Yeah. Yeah. You got me. (laughs) The the entire time you're talking about that, it was making me think about how she talks about external memory and like external sources of information. Cause that was something where I was like, I don't know. Like, I think I agree with her core argument about how this is working. I think we would probably disagree on like good or bad, or like we would maybe hit different percentage points of like percent good versus percent bad, maybe. Yeah. Um, But, like, she talks about, like, how as we have all this information available to us and everything, like, we are basically at a point, which I, like, I've thought this, so, like, I cannot say that I disagree because I've definitely thought this before where I'm, like, I don't need to know this. I can Wikipedia it or, like, I can look it up. Like, someone else knows, something else knows. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go Mm -hmm. there. And I Mm -hmm. feel like, like, I've had that same experience of, like, re-watching something, like, a video that I made about something that I'm, like, thinking about, like, a book or something and being, like, oh right that's like what I thought about that book like I I had that thought about that book and I'm like well I guess like like what your existential crisis that you're having about like reading for the public like that's how I feel sometimes about like would I remember how I felt about this stuff like if Uh I had not made a video about it Uh because to some degree like I definitely have stronger feelings or I am more thoughtful about my feelings because I write them out or I talk them out like that I think is like 
hands down like just inescapable like once I put right. thought into it it's like I that's gonna like register more in my memory than if I hadn't thought about how I was gonna talk about it uh -huh. um, but the fact that also at the end of the day I still forget and YouTube remembers is like weird <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but that that again sort of goes back to the like the the is this good, is this bad, whatever, like that complicated whatever. Uh, because yeah. I uh, sure on the one hand there are are like thoughts like this, like I, I forget the specific thought and I I've, I've stored it so stored it somewhere else. YouTube yeah. whatever will remind me that I had these opinions, uh, but like. Also, uh, there a lot of these things are things that I maybe wouldn't have formed as, like, I don't know. I, I could see another version of me reading this book, just reading this book and then moving on and, like, not. Yeah. And if I didn't have this space to, like, discuss it and to, like, have feeling, engage with feelings about it, um, yeah. that I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah. And so, I don't know. So maybe maybe I will forget the thoughts fairly quickly but I also I I think I'm having more thoughts than I would have otherwise like without yeah. without externalizing that working memory and so this sort of goes back to the like so fine yes there there's less there's less happening uh less that I'm actively storing or uh, this is the thing I don't know that there is actually less that I'm actively storing because when I think about how many more things I am formulating all all of these thoughts and feelings about like okay, no, I cannot hold all of them all the time. But by finding places like this that I am putting them, it is really easily accessible, right? Like I can yeah. watch back any of those videos or whatever. And like, and I'm like, oh yes, I had all of these thoughts and feelings and I remember why. And usually, usually I will find that I can do an, and another thing about it. Mm -hmm. Like while I'm watching it, yeah. I'm like, oh, this is bringing it all back. I remember all of yeah. the feelings. There's also something very monkey brain about watching video of yourself. It's like a separate yes. thing where when you yeah. see yourself experience an emotion, you also <laughs> then have, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you've never You're had empathizing it. with yourself. It's very, very weird. Yeah. If you've never edited hours of video footage of your own face, let <laughs> me just tell you, this was the weirdest thing about it being part of my job to edit hours of video footage of my own face was that I would feel myself like smiling or frowning while I was editing. And like, it, like it was just purely like, because I was happy yeah. or sad in or up angry. Never. I was never yeah. really sad. Sometimes I was angry though uh, with <laughs> yeah. a teleprompter. Well, <laughs> yeah. that, like that moment of just like, and then like whatever like feeling it uh monkey brain style but anyway sorry this yeah. is a whole tangent my point was my point was that the existence of that record like i don't find yes i am storing less or i'm not storing all of it but i don't know that i'm i'm i would push back on the idea of how much is being lost by externalizing yeah. it because like yeah. there is a lot that i can still access there yeah. in terms of what those thoughts and feelings were so yeah I don't know. yeah it's sort of like I wouldn't even have this memory to forget if it weren't for me yeah. making these videos and I think Colby like brings up this question of like the public part fits um what the author was saying of the third life the contemplation phase of reading I think uh -huh. where it feels a little bit different to me is because it is public it's also then for me overladen with a lot of thoughts about like well what is like what is me doing this on book to mean in terms of like who's gonna be like listening to me like who how are people gonna respond like I think for me it, like that's where it feels um, a little bit different because the version that I ultimately will put out is informed to some extent by an audience. And that is, I guess, maybe part of the but contemplation. Like you can get to cycles and cycles of thinking. Right. Well, it's part of the contemplation. It's also sort of, there's something intrinsically empathy, like uh, again, to go back to the, the these mm. questions about like, how are we defining empathy and what is that? It's that you are imagining other people's thoughts as well yeah. as like, either you're yeah. like, here's, here are my thoughts. And I'm also sort of, kind of you know hedging my bets here on like what other thoughts I what thoughts I think other people are going to have about all of this or the thoughts yeah. that they'll have about my thoughts or whatever yeah. um and like I don't know I, I don't it's not I, she doesn't really like talk about this or break this yeah. down so I'm not gonna like put words in her mouth about what she is, yeah. is thinking or feeling about this but I, I I definitely could see a a a version of like of this that is oh well then you're not doing contemplation because you're not having your own thoughts and this is something that I just like patently reject this is mm -hmm. like uh yeah. again going back to like the podcast something that we talk a lot about is that um Mari and I are both big like review readers particularly from movies for stuff that is like super mm -hmm. popular one of the things that I like that 
I love talking about super popular shit because it is super popular and because a lot yeah. of people have engaged with it. And so there are a lot of thoughts about it. And like that to me is what I find like that makes it so much more fun and so much more interesting. And like going into any like big movie podcast episode, I have for sure read at least half a dozen reviews before yeah. we, we talk about it. And it is because I have no, I have to me, the idea of like the purity of my individual thoughts is, is a, is like such a, um, it is, it is honestly like, ignorant like to me I think it is deeply ignorant to believe that you possess those things because even even like whatever those first thoughts were that you had after you finished watching the movie before you talk to another person are are informed by social context they are informed by all of the life and baggage that you had up to the moment that you watched that thing which other people had a lot of input in other people were feeding inputs into the machine that spit out those those grand personal thoughts and opinions and whatever uh so like i don't know like i I just to me the idea of my opinion being like a synthesis of other opinions is like that to me is i I don't know like that's that's like part of how i'm arriving at them like i'm I'm reading like i really like the thing i didn't like the thing so i'm like reading a lot of like positive reviews i'm like yeah i did like that thing and that's like okay well maybe i didn't you know what are what is what what do people hate about the thing um i'm like oh well you know maybe that thing is bad or no actually you're wrong that you think that this thing is bad and i don't think that this thing is bad and here is why and and whatever and like it's a level of thought that i wouldn't have had otherwise and i i don't know again there's there is something very external happening here about the development of thought that like i think is valuable and important and i i want it i I don't know i'm not yeah yeah. you know i think this is like what this is kind of speaking to is like one of the things that's like maybe actually the most one of the most important missing parts of her like description of digital life is that she describes it strictly as people are consuming it and not that people are participating and producing it and I think that is actually really important because it's like basically a form of recursion almost where like you're never just consuming things you are engaging with them and so that that doesn't mean that the engagement is inherently good or bad or whatever um it's that there are other like things going on like in terms of just like the way that you engage like it's it's not just a screen like there are other things happening that like on the up like on this side of the screen on the other like sorry I'm losing track of where I was going yeah with no, Basically, no no the I, idea is like same oh, this is an essential thing <laughs> that I think we're like finally like are getting to that we're uh-huh, realizing uh-huh. This is how we've arrived here in the first place is by like, well, I had a thought and then I'm going to meander uh, over here and then we'll pick it up and whatever. But uh, yeah, I think, yes, that feels, that feels like fundamentally like the thing like that's, that is what I find so like off-putting about a lot of her collapse, like the, the monolith of digital that she has created. And I like, I like the fact that you specifically called it a form of recursion because like a lack of recursion is a specific thing that she calls out is like mm. that is the, it's, she talks about it in the context of a physical book gives you, means you, you know where things are. Um, oh, yeah, and so like yeah. having, having a, it's, it's in, it's around that part of the book. I think it's actually one of the things that I flagged too. Um, and that like, because you yeah it's, i was like i'm pretty sure it is one of my little flags in, in cognitive development terms mm-hmm. recursion aids looking back which aids mm-hmm. children's monitoring of what they comprehend and like that's literally what we're talking about though right is the yeah. ways in which like digital also being an input space as much as it is an out like as much as we are yeah. taking things for, out from it we are also putting things into it and often we are putting like this this recursion into it like this this very yeah. thing that that she is has tied to something tactile and i don't think she's wrong about like the tactile like piece of it that's true yeah. but i think that there are ways in which this thing also exists digitally that the book is not really accounting for so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I feel like I finally realized what I, I needed yeah. to like. We realize. did it. We got there. <laughs> that's that's what this whole hour was about. Yeah. Um, and I'm so happy for us. I'm so happy. Yeah. For us. So, um, yeah. Uh, shout out to Colby for helping us get there. Yes. yes. Uh, also Colby, our our third nonfiction book club member. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> we we would have really struggled with this. Really, for a really long would have been time. rough out here. Would have been rough out here. Uh. Um, cool. Okay, so we we definitely have solved it. Um, yeah. Was there anything um, else? Because we're we're coming up on our hour. We're um, up on our hour. Yeah. This was like a, like we just like we had a lot that we, like, we had a wanted lot. to unpack uh-huh. personally. Uh-huh. Um, 
and professionally and professionally you know yeah. spiritually emotionally uh <laughs> um i will say i think okay my one last thing that i thought was interesting at the end when she's coming like i think the last few letters like kind of are a little bit um for me easier to like parse through because i think they're more geared on like her specific area of knowledge of like you know yes. how do we teach kids um, and I was intrigued by the way that she was framing this idea of like bioliterate brain and like this idea of trying to develop fluency in both a digital and like physical print kind of space. Um, mm -hmm. But like basically kind of trying to keep them separate, like sort of like the way like she she parallels this to like um, growing up bilingual and quick code switching and basically kind of making that the idea of uh, how we should teach um or maybe try to teach kids like she's also saying this knowing that this might not be the best way but that's what her current hypothesis is like framed around um mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. I just like I I did kind of like that um yeah as a thing to think about yes I overall highly I do actually highly recommend this book is the thing like, yeah. is, is the thing that is so like that I don't think that I'm getting across like I, I it is like a weird one. I don't know, like thinking about giving this a star rating or whatever. I, yeah. I, I feel like in my heart, I probably am only, I'm going to have to just give it like a three because of the things that I took issue with. But yeah. I also like, it's a three that I want you to read so that yeah. you can also have all of these thoughts and feelings. Like, I don't yeah. know, like I, it's a weird. Yeah. I think this is like one of those books where I think like if you want to read it, I think you should read it. Like that's like, yes. like if that's... anything about this appeals to you, if you are interested in the, the, the loose discussion, the discussion on the tin, like yeah. you, then yes, you should, even if you might end up agree, like however you end up feeling about her, her specific perspective, if this conversation is of interest to you, you should read this book. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Cool. Uh, um, I'm looking at that. Yes, I hold on. I have it. I have it right here, but I forgot to yeah. bring it on my desk. So give me fifteen seconds. <laughs> um. So Nicole is going to grab the next book that we're going to be doing next month. So consumed. This is the book. Um. I am going to have to read the subtitle on here and not um in front of my the book because I can't read it there. Uh, consumed, the need for collective change, colonialism, climate change, and consumerism. Um, yeah, I'm excited about this book. Uh, we, a book about us, like about consumerism in December, a little on the nose, but yeah. uh, you know, that's yeah. that's what we're doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. So we're going to be on Nicole's channel on December 11th at 5 p.m. Eastern, like back to our normal time, unless we decide at the last minute to change it. because Which we might do because yeah, it can happen. We do what we want. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you guys, everyone, for joining us. And we'll see you guys next month. Bye.